Welcome to Endgame. Tonight's episode is about the history of virtual reality. Uh, your hosts are Poplapo and Psych. Yay! Thanks, Hello. Hellboy. Welcome, Thank you very much. Everyone. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, so, uh, so today's topic we are uh, going to discuss. Uh, uh, we usually oh so Endgame is a show about the future of humanity. Um, but today, uh, like we sometimes do, we're taking a look backward um, at the steps that led to where we are now and. Where we now are now is obviously in VR, uh, but that's um, and, and it's and it's a fairly recent thing uh, for a lot of us. Um, we we I I got VR in 2016 when the Oculus Rift came out, and before that point, I basically didn't have any exposure to it uh, whatsoever. Um, but it had actually been around for decades before then, and actually. Um, Basically, as I was doing this research, I found, um, and I'd kind of learned from other sources that that VR has been around uh, as basically as long as computers have been around. Um, they, the the concept and the technologies have been developing uh, pretty much pretty much from the same period, uh, and uh, the only limitation was the processing power that was required and the and the graphics uh, the graphics power that was required. Um, and so I kind of I want to go back and talk about that a little bit. Um, but first, I wanted to talk about an event I went to last weekend. Um, so this is Harry Davis. He is a um, he is a developer at Valve, and he is creating uh, the the new well the unannounced Valve VR game. I guess they're making like a like a big deal VR game. Uh, that they haven't announced yet, but they're going to soon, I think, maybe. Anyway, he came and he did a talk about it. Um, and he was pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> um, he was pretty cool. He was actually, uh, like, obviously really excited to talk about uh, what he was talking about. And he, and he talked about interaction design, and he talked about um, uh, the difficulties of developing for VR, but also the the power of developing for VR. And one of the points that he kept returning to was that if you're developing for VR, you're not trying to simulate reality. Um, you're trying to simulate an experience. And the two can be pretty different. Um, he actually, hmm. he, he was talking to developers, and so he went into, like, he did a pretty deep dive on... Um, a, a single inter point of interaction design, uh, specifically make, uh, opening a door, and um, basically there's a there's like an kind of an uncanny valley between uh, when it comes to realistic experiences in VR because, um, like the the experience of opening a door is n is in real life is a non-event. Like we just uh, we just. Do it like you yeah. don't think about it but then in vr if you make the the experience really super realistic you have to grab the handle turn the knob on you know it unlatches the door you have to pull it you have to like pay attention to where your body is like that simulates reality uh, but it doesn't simulate the experience um and and like but these devices that we have that we're inside of our, our hmds and our controllers like they're simulating our perceptual experience a first person experience um and actually that has a pretty rich tradition not not simulating the first person experience exactly but um simulating uh in yes. the in the case of theater um so i think i think theater and well storytelling is basically one of the most powerful uh powerful parts of our social uh psychological lives um it's like the like narratives uh give us give us meaning and um basically i mean teach us everything and like simulating narrative or uh you know simulating a story conveying a narrative um is is something that we've done like from the very very beginning and um it's like you um, had some thoughts about this about what the experience of theater is like yeah this was like i think 
something like uh i guess six years ago i was talking to one of my brother's friends who's an art history phd or something i was telling him about vr and he hadn't really heard of it and i was telling him about it and then he was like oh or no he knew he had heard the term virtual reality and he was like actually in our field the term virtual reality has been used to describe um, theater uh, in the olden days and stuff, and that it's the first kind of time for like acting and the kind of plays and things like that is the, one of the first times in human society where people actually escape into a different reality, or at least for a second, they kind of suspend their belief of what happens in the real world and they are looking at a play of other people in this other setting and kind of are immersed there and things like that. So that theoretically being the first time that we're like translating our brains into this other experience, basically. Um, even though yeah. it's just imaginative. And and um, for for basically as long as there has been history, um, theater's been pretty important um, culturally. Uh, Aristotle wrote about theater a lot, um, and uh, one of the things he, he talked about that was kind of an idea that was present in his culture at the time was the idea of catharsis. And it was and it was an experience that you uh, had while you were uh, partaking in a tragedy, um, or while you were watching a tragedy play. And um, he considered it a very important, um, normal part of uh, a normal and healthy part of the human experience to basically get pulled into a narrative. Um, get, you know, get, get pulled into the drama of it, experience all these emotions and these turmoil and fear and all these negative things um, to experience. Uh, it, it was a, they basically believed it had sort of this cleansing effect um, that it, that it helped you uh, kind of rebalance yourself and your own mind. And then of course you'd come back out of that experience back into reality um, and have, and like be in a more balanced place. Um, so I think it's, it's, and, and I think there's an argument to be made that that is one of the intentions or at least the effects of basically all art. It, uh, you know, regardless of how perceptually illus illusory it is, like VR, um, it definitely has the effect of, of pulling up, pulling us out into ourselves, out of ourselves and pulling us into mm. another world of some kind. Uh, you know, we're, we're partaking in the artist's vision uh, in some way, um, even that's, if the, yeah. Well, that's interesting because I think like, I guess I haven't thought about this, but I guess all VR could be considered, like every room in VR chat could be considered art, which I've actually haven't thought oh, about. Oh, like, sure, yeah. Because you're, yeah, you're constructing it and then it's subjective and people are experiencing it and you're like put, creating the world that people are in. So I never I thought about so. that, but. Like every yeah. moment we're in VR, we are inhabiting a piece of art, which I think is pretty cool. It's a it's a good yeah. It's a it's a good experience, I think. Um, obviously, there's stuff to be said for inhabiting the natural world that is unintentional, but um, it's a pretty cool experience to. We don't need occupy. that. We're destroying yeah, the natural whatever. world, so we might as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might as well enjoy this. This I one. Go work and play human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Role playing. Um, okay, VR. but when it comes to actually, yeah, yeah, simulating, uh, simulating reality, the, the reality that our, our senses experience, um, uh, it, it, I mean, it, the tradition goes back as far as photography, um, this is a stereoscope, it's basically, they, you know, from, uh, they took two photos from very close to uh, from right next to each other and then put the two photographs um, in a stereoscope and then you could view it in 3D and obviously a pretty rudimentary version of what we have <laughs> now but um, I think definitely a precursor and it's not very far it's kind of funny because it's like it's not too far from cardboard Google cardboard I mean it's like <laughs> yeah. you know it's all those headsets is just like replace <laughs> yeah put a phone there it's like right it's just moving pictures <laughs> instead of a static picture it's really not yeah. that much different <laughs> um but uh obviously computers eventually took off we we learned uh, some stuff about information theory and then we started um crafting uh computing devices and this is this is kind of what i mean when i say that uh like vr devices go back um as far as almost as far as the invention of computing. These are very early patents um, that, uh, that, were, uh, that were filed uh, in the 60s, um, the early 60s. 
So this one on the left here, this is a, a plan for a virtual uh, movement device. So very much like your VR controllers, uh, these are, um, uh, it was it was basically um, translating physical movement into some sort of digital information or maybe even analog information. But anyway, translating movement to, to data that you could then reproduce. Question. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what is, what's the thing that the sphere is supposed to output? Like, there's no, like, there's no more that's like that. It's like TV screen or something? Yeah, this one actually, so, so this telescope Yeah, it wasn't mask, clear. Uh, by Morton Heilig, and he had a few, and he had a few inventions. Um, he actually, I guess there was a, uh, prototype of this built, but each of these is a television screen. Um, and back in 1960, that's, that's kind of a feat in itself. Oh, we're looking at it from the top down. Yes. So this, this is like is a headset. Much, okay, yeah, okay. It's a, yeah, it's wow. basically a headset. So Palmer um, Lucky probably saw this image and then that's how we have like, a... I could do <laughs> I mean, this pretty much looks like a... It looks like a rift, pretty much. I mean. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the design no, was probably. not... Uh, I mean, not nearly as sophisticated as what we have. And again, the limitation here was the ability to feed it um, dynamic enough information at a rate that, that they could use. Um, so this didn't go anywhere. It didn't get any traction, but he did file the patent. Um, and he filed another one too, uh, oh, this one, uh, but Pika. Pika did, did he ever make a working prototype? <clears throat> I heard, I read that he did, um, but no. I haven't, I haven't read anything else about it. And there was only one made, uh, and I don't know, I don't know how good it was. Given um, image but... technology back in the 1960s with, uh, uh, cathode ray tubes, um, in the magnetrons required, that must have been heavy and... I, yes, yes, um, and that's that was another limitation. You couldn't you couldn't realistically wear these things. But that same inventor went on to invent this. Right, like it's this just, is the size. Okay. Yeah, it's so a sit down is, experience. Right, this was a much more okay. realistic uh, uh, device that he made uh, called the Sensorama Simulator, and it actually it it you know you obviously sit down in it, but it also vibrated. Um, it had. Uh, it had scent. You could smell things. It, it blew wind at you so that you could feel the wind, um, and then it uh, vibrated the seat. So like it was this. I mean, he he really definitely had the like the uh, concept in mind of the fully immersive experience because he wanted you know he wanted all of the senses to be uh, to be hit, huh. and um, so that was definitely uh, an imaginative thing. And I don't think this was like widely manufactured but i think it was in arcades um at least a few of them and um one thing one thing that's interesting it's like it's it's cool that he he like discovered basically or it seems like he kind of discovered immersion and trying he was basically trying to create a sense of presence by you know taking technology as far as it can go and it's interesting because i wonder i mean i guess we're heading towards this right i mean like vibrations we have vibrations and controllers but really olfaction or aroma is, is really uh I guess one of the biggest sense and motion, I guess, is something else that we don't really have too much of except for our own bodies. But it's like, yeah. are we really heading towards our technology like these headsets that we have now? Are we heading in that direction of actually getting towards all of these constructs being um, well, I think, you know, built in? I think it'll probably be the question of whether we end up ab like abstract ab abstracting out the machine even more. Like, uh, you know, because mm. we're going to start having uh, uh, brain implants and yeah. that can start giving us stimulation. And I, I think the question there will be whether that, whether that works, it might not, uh, whether it's a like good experience and whether it's a experience that can be controlled and not result in virtual reality um, via direct stimulation. I don't know if that's the case. It'll be cool to find out. Um, but if we do have that, like, definitely, all of these things will be in the Matrix. It'll be great. Um, Eva, yes. Hi. Uh, so, I noticed when I went on vacation, um, to I think it was the Dominican, that, um, they had VR there, but there was also, um, almost like a, a large track pad of sorts that you stood on and you walked mm. on to add, like, the, the... Walking, oh yeah, I suppose motion as well. Um, the uh, uh treadmill. Were they strapped? Like, we strapped like in, the or like? 
They weren't, but there were. There was a very small Ooh. space. It, it was like a little gate that you can kind of. It was a very small circle. Uh, I'd say maybe uh, foot radius off of um, their bodies, uh, and it was. It was. It was like a little fence was surrounding them. So they weren't hmm. strapped. But it, the way that it was, it was like a cotton cave. So it would be like you're walking up a hill in any direction, and it was flat in the center. So you weren't technically hmm. able to get out. It was. Oh, oh yeah, I've I've heard of these. So like a like a bowl kind of that you're standing. Yeah, it looks like something. a bowl. Wait, so did you try? Wow. That? I I didn't. I wasn't able to. But it was in an arcade. Okay. Huh? Were people? Did it seem like they were naturally walking? Like it it worked? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it looks really cool. That would be fun. I know there have been attempts at treadmills and stuff. Like there was a Kickstarter for that Omni Omni. Does anybody remember what it's Virtual called? Virtual Omni. Yeah, that. Yes. And then. Or some something like that's that. That's another one. <laughs> um, yeah, but I haven't VR. heard that any of of these are Cyber are popular. Uh, virtualizer. Yeah, we can throw out names, you know. Um, but that's definitely like obviously I want to run around in Skyrim VR, you know, like. Hacking it, yeah, hacking right. Bad guys without worrying about running into my cat. I'm like that would be great. No man's sky. <laughs> but this guy's sitting down. Yeah. True. He is sitting down. So even then, he didn't have the the full like full motion experience. Um. So this guy had some good ideas. Um. But he uh there, there came along um another fellow who basically had the the uh he went on to revolutionize the computer industry as a whole and also to basically invent uh vr in its in its uh, as it currently um conceptualized um so ivan sutherland was a computer programmer um who basically is responsible for uh inventing just a bazillion things he's got like patents up the wazoo there, there's a ton of them but his most uh, his most famous one was the sketchpad um in the late 50s and uh early 60s and this one is cool because this was long before the first um mouse and just like desktop environment was ever uh was ever conceived of i, I think it was um let's see i have it written down um we it was oh, 15 years question. before the first mouse was ever used uh, yeah. So that means touch screen is made before mouse and keyboard. Yeah, and not only the fact that it's a touch screen, um, which is, is it, it, or is it, it a? Is. No, it's a is capacitive. It this... Oh wow. Um, so this, so like you couldn't touch it with your finger, but you could touch it with this pen. It was a, it was a light okay, pen. Okay, okay. Um, and then the screen would detect uh, where the, uh, it would, it was like photoelectric or something, and would detect where the pen was touching it. Um, mm. And this was not only so this was called the sketch pad and you could draw in it, but not just in 2D. It was also it's also the precursor to, precursor to programs like Blender um, because you could uh, create 3D objects in it as well um, and then rotate them around and have and have um, mm. 3D visualizations. And this was basically before uh, before any visualization. At this point in time, um, computers were still being operated with punch cards and magnetic tape, and that wow. was that was how they were operated. Um, so in it DOS, was pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty revolutionary for that time. Uh, before DOS, I'm pretty. Oh, like, before DOS, is, yeah, DOS was yeah, after, yeah. I guess, yeah. Um, this is and this uh, hardware it's on is called the Lincoln TX2, um, and it uh, you know it's pretty powerful, but it's big. Obviously, big mainframe. Um, Catapult, did you have a comment? Yeah, Sutherland, that name rings a bell. Is, isn't he the one that did end up inventing the mouse? And he basically got nothing for it because he did have it. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if he invented the mouse itself. Um, he got... He did get recognized for a lot of his accomplishments, uh, which is good. Um, I don't know if the mouse was one of them, but he uh, did basically user interfaces were his were his deal. Like he invented so many of the concepts that went with it. Um, mm. I I don't know about that specific one, but did he, he work at HP? He no, I think well this one. Or Xerox. Was it Xerox, Xerox invented was the mouse. The mouse? Yeah, Xerox, it was Xerox, yeah. Xerox invented the mouse. Invented the mouse. Um, at this point, he was working for. God, I don't remember, and I didn't write it down. Um, That's okay. But yeah, there were only there were only a few players back in the day, and Xerox was a big one of them. Um, so 
could have been them. Mm. It's also, it's kind of funny because Sketchpad sounds like a name. I guess it sounds like, like Sketchfab or something, but it's like, Sketchpad sounds like a name of an app that just could exist today, you know? Yeah, but it yeah, probably is. I think like... I have an app called Sketchpad. That's like... <laughs> Google that's Sketchpad. Pretty... It yeah. was Google yeah. Sketchpad. Yeah, it's a thing. Ah, um, yes. Anyway, at the, basically at the same time he was developing this, he was also developing the Sword of Damocles, uh, which this is <laughs> what a name. widely... Yeah, I know, right? Well, they call it that because it because it has to hang from the ceiling, um, and I guess there's a sword in the mythological sword or something that was hung from the. I'm not really sure about the mythos behind I'm it, but anyway. He was, I'm glad he was a nerd at heart. It's, it's, it's uh, a yeah, good sign. Definitely. Yes. Um, but it was too big and heavy to operate, uh, uh, just to, or just to wear. So you had to it had to hang from the ceiling. But it was both a VR and an AR device, and it basically it displayed things in these wireframe sort of forms so you know obviously not graphics like we have today but still like it it was again revolutionary at the time it took took um you know, you know a 3d shape or the data of a 3d shape and displayed it in the user's perception overlaid on top of the real world um or in its own environment and that was basically the first time that that had ever really happened uh, with this in, in this holistic of a of a model um and and hopefully if it works please work there's a video please 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 Ooh. okay yes okay so here's here's a user using the sword of damocles that it has to hang from the ceiling and this is i'm not sure if they did this in post but basically this was what it looked like in the in in your in the eyes and you could see like a wire frame Wait, in, in 1960, 1962. So, what was that? Is it yeah, a plane? Oh, okay, sorry. I only see a dot screen. I was there for a while. Ah. If you're in your crazy I, setup, I, it's not going to work tonight. I couldn't quite be able to question. Oh, you got the stream working? Oh, okay, great. Wait, did you see the video, Lyco? I saw it just fine. Uh, yeah, it, it should be. I already see the video now. Although it's paused. That's oh, fine. wait. Maybe replay it? Or... Did you see that? Did you see the... Here, I'll play it again. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, I can see it now. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so anyway, this so is what he's seeing, this box. Hard to see. okay. Yeah, but, but like this type of yeah wireframe box. It's. I know it's a little hard to see. But that's and I guess an it's, example. And... And it's powerful because it's an image that's being projected over his reality, I guess. So there was no other way, there was no other technology that could do that, basically. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, so... So actually, so sort of... Great FOV. <laughs> <laughs> I, it might. It might have a better FOV than the... Uh... Uh, HoloLens. I don't know. Unless um, it's another. Unless this is the ancient version of the whale is. in the stadium, you know, mm, it's like yeah. the motion or, or yeah. magic leaps version of. Uh... I wonder if it was Mark Darrow than what we have now. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe it, it was definitely like heavy and 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 they had to use a lot bigger components, you know, than than what we have. Um, but actually, okay, so I'm this like so this uh device was made but um it didn't it didn't take off again uh partly because the device was just so enormous um and and ungainly and also just the processing power wasn't there um you know that the, it had that enormous computer that it could operate on but otherwise um there was no like there there wasn't any utility for it at that point and so vr did not uh, although it was invented around this time it didn't take off um at this time and uh, so through the 70s and 80s, um, most of the uh, development that happened in VR uh, was instead um, military research and development um, into simulators, um, obviously for training purposes. And yeah. um, I don't have a, a bunch of slides of theirs, but I, I know um, they did uh, flight simulation primarily. Yeah, that was that? the biggest. I believe flight simulation was the biggest uh, impetus, and that was kind of... I think they started, they were the, some of the first people to have 
uh, what well, we'll get to in a, in a little bit of the cave kind of stuff, but like basically screens mm-hmm. on multiple sides that are synced with each other to be able to simulate being in a cockpit of an airplane. And so they pushed that technology forward pretty quickly, uh, uh, mm-hmm. or pretty far, I guess. And there uh, were, I think simulation. I saw pictures, there were different kinds of helmets and stuff um, that they tried. I, I know that when the Oculus Rift was uh, in development, um, someone who had done R and D, or like who had who had done VR work in the military, like made a blog post that kind of made waves because he was like, "VR is completely unrealistic. I've been working with it for years, and it's not feasible as a as like a consumer product because it's just too slow, and you get sick, and like it's just not going to work." Um, mm. I guess probably thinking about the old military technology from you know the 80s or whenever. Like that's um, it was it was rough for a while for a lot of decades because. Because um, producing a high enough frame rate at a high enough fidelity uh, in a in a you know convenient enough device like that's a that's a hard challenge and we just we just barely reach past that 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 barrier uh, in terms of timeline. Um, so through the seventies and eighties, development was kind of slow, but then late eighties and then early nineties, it started to pick back up again. Um, This one is called the Boom Telepresence uh, Monitor, and um, the it's called the Boom, I think, because it kind of operates like a boom mic. It's got this stand, uh, and then the user wears it, but also, uh, again, uh, to operate well, it was so heavy that you couldn't just wear the device itself, but um, they found a way to... This This one was in... uh, Hold on, I have in my notes. Um, This one was in 1981. And let me pull up that video. Does everybody see the screen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was uh, gonna say, 1991. I mean, 80, no, it's um, 81. There's no way that's 91. This, well, it was... It, the patent was issued in 91. Uh, whatever Ooh, this video came from, I'm not sure. But, Whoa, that's crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, so he's controlling this really robot. <laughs> oh, epic. Uh, Very epic. Yeah, like, I want this in real life. Like, I want this so... right now. I know, right? It's so cute. It's like this little, uh... <laughs> it's like Wally. <laughs> yeah. Very responsive. Yeah, so this um, one obviously... So, when are we, when are we gonna get right. VR robots? <laughs> I, that's what I yeah. want to say. I have a, I agree. Don't we have like telepresence robots already already for consumers? Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, they, they, they yep. it could be a way for absent students to learn to, to participate in class. I have heard of like that. I haven't ever. Segway kind of thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. all you need. No, there's, uh, there's, no, there's actually yeah, yeah, there's the actually a movie. telepresence one for like sixteen hundred dollars oh, that was released this year. <laughs> But it's not through VR. It's on your phone. <laughs> oh my god. It's kind of okay, funny. Okay, so oh, this next one... I remember this. Uh, so this next one is a is called Fishbowl VR, and this one uh, was invented in 1993, and basically had stereoscopic rendering on a computer screen um, while the, the user wore 3D glasses, and, and then the uh, picture on the screen uh, oriented to the three to the, where the location of the 3D glasses were, so he's seeing this image in 3D, but it's called fish tank VR because it looks like he's looking into a box where he's seeing a 3D environment. Um, oh, someone should make a stereoscopic version of this video. Ah, what's the name of this? This is 1993. That's, I think the concept was from 1993. This is just a oh, modern okay. take on it. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it wasn't that a Wiimote? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, this looks probably. so yeah. modern. I was like, <laughs> what kind of secret lab is this? Yeah, uh, so... Secret military <laughs> lab with right. their Wii. But this, but this concept, yeah. So this was invented in, in Um Wow. And, again, not super popularized, but still, like, the 90s was a great time for VR. Like, there were, there were all sorts of different devices coming out. Um... And probably, uh, like this one, this one is definitely more sophisticated than, um, 
than the one they had back then. Uh, but obviously still relevant, sort of, because it's, uh, you know, still using it. I would try this. This looks pretty cool. And isn't, I know the new Pixel's gonna have some similar features to that, with, like the swiping and things like that. That sounds cool. Um, so, okay, so probably my, uh, the device from the 90s that probably had the most, uh, traction in terms of, uh, in terms of where it was used is the cave system. Uh, this was invented in 1992 by Carolina Cruz Nera, and it was basically just a room uh, that projected video uh, of, of what the user, uh, of the environment that the user was in. And the user would wear uh, glasses, again, that would have uh, like little, uh, little sensors on them that, that uh, cameras could track their movements and then move the picture in the, uh, in the box with um, uh, along with their movement and would have controllers as well. So, uh, and this cave system, honestly, like it kind of took off. I, I mean, a little bit, I never heard of it before I really got involved in VR, but apparently it's, it was widely used in the academic environment and, and yeah, still is, there's still lots is. of, there's lots of universities, uh, that still have a cave system. Um, Unfortunately. I, <laughs> so I think they're slowly being phased out in favor of, you know, HMD VR. Um, but it basically had like tons of applications. So I found like just tons and tons of um, academic articles and and uh, writing about using the cave to do historic vis visualizations. So um, uh, doing archaeology research and basically exploring our ar archaeological environments that way. Um, doing physics simulations is one of them. Um, and uh, it also for uh, is or probably was uh, widely used in manufacturing. Um, anyway, so here's a here's a video about um, how it works. So she's I think moving with her controller right now, but you can see uh, obviously the environment moving. Um, Honestly, it looks, super it looks cool better. It looks better in a cam- I've tried this, and it looks better on the- on this camera than it does actually when you're in through, looking through these glasses. Interesting. Is it in stereoscopic vision? Can you see- you're like, are you seeing this in 3D? Because it looks like there's two images you're, being displayed. It's- yeah, and that- it's so bad. It's so bad. It's like, I don't know, I can't quite explain it. It's almost like a little bit of a step up from the red and blue 3D. You know, okay. glasses when you're like watching a 3D movie, it's like, it's it just doesn't even compare to the level of immersion that you feel when you're in a head-mounted display. For sure. Uh, um, but uh, they, they also use it for stroke uh, for vic people who can't wear no, uh, HMD the, as well. Um, it's a very useful medical thanks to a uh, intervention as well. You decided to move for the cave. Um, this is an uh, application that I the, uh, thought was interesting. Uh, bar manufacturers uh, use in this. Which, uh, um, uh, to kind quality. of get Thanks an experience the of what their car is the, uh, like that they're making. Um, I, I mean, I've seen lots of advertisements for recently for really people who can fantastic. design, uh, for people to design things in VR. I didn't know that it was already done, at least to some extent. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, and you can also have multiple people in it. Right, yes, that was another... The engineering design. It was another thing. I, I saw lots of pictures of the most people in there. I wish my setup was like that. Naturally, <laughs> that setup is so expensive. It's like I think it's like two hundred thousand dollars at least. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad my HMD doesn't cost that. I know it's so crazy how far we've come in terms of. And now you could just go get a quest. <laughs> Yeah, I know the quest is crazy. That's it. You know, thinking about the $400. I mean, yeah, this cave system for like 200,000 all the way down to $400 for the quest that has like everything built in. It's unbelievable how far we've come. Um, oh, something that was that is cool about the cave system, though, it also uh, had the first uh, kind of concept or the first like implementation of something resembling a metaverse. Uh, there was a system called the Cavern, and it was basically 
basically supposed to be a connected, uh, a network of connected cave devices across uh, multiple institutions um, that multiple people could could basically uh, collaborate on the same on the same research or the same projects um, and and basically interact online uh, via their cave systems. Um, and this was used at least a little bit. Um, there's a uh, I found um, implementation documentation. So like. If you want to implement your own in your university, I, I've got the URL I can point you to. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, yeah, basically, uh, so, like, VR, VR chat before VR chat. Ex exactly, yes. Uh, the university version of VR chat, where you go into a room instead of your HMD. I mean, that sounds kind of cool, like to have a room to go into and then you're in. I, I don't know. Um, I was kind of impressed with the cave system. I really like researching it. I might make a comeback one day. Maybe. Mm, Maybe you can get some sort maybe. of. You could probably get some sort of hybrid of like physical splay case as augmented reality somehow. I don't know. There's so many new gadgets coming out that um, I, I, anything seems possible. I do remember seeing stuff like this on television when I was in the 90s. And I will say as a t young teen that I thinking that this technology was absolutely incredible and just imagining what it would be like to be able to experience a technology like this and I think that it's it's almost it's funny that all of us and to be honest I think a lot of people like that don't use VR would still find this technology incredible and we're in a specific room of people that find this antiquated and hilarious like that's it's 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 yeah. it's very interesting you know that yeah. a lot i think a lot of people out there like my grandparents would find this incredible and because they've yeah. never tried vr you know yeah well that also that comes back to like the that's kind of related i think to when they the first movies that were shown with like a train coming out the audience and they ran out of the movie theater <laughs> you know, it's like as you get desensitized to the fidelity of technology, all of a sudden it's, it's less impactful, you know, and it's and things like that. I guess uh, so, yeah. uh, Deadly, and then I saw Catapult also had a uh, quick comment. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. The, the reason why I personally don't think that the cave system will come back because the biggest benefit it has to HMDs is that you can use it with multiple people, but at the same time, that's also the biggest problem because. Um, you will run into the technical difficulty that there's only one operator. The cave system mm. only allows one perspective, mm. and everybody ends up there. And I've been in one before. Normally, gets some motion sickness problems because it can be very responsible to small head movements, and you're literally just standing in a shaking box. Oh, oh that's interesting. interesting. That yeah, that that that's a big challenge. Yeah, it's well, then it's also interesting person. that such a, uh, a technology that has so many difficulties also became so widespread. Um, yeah, there's... well, it's the best solution, I think, for, you know, for research, yeah. especially. It's uh, Catapult. I would like to know as to how many of the general public, how many people got introduced to VR by the movie Lawnmower. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't no, know. I don't know. People never would have even imagined VR until they would have seen one. I, I think Virtual Boy was it for me. Yeah, when did Lawnmower Man come out? Because uh, like oh, fiction, man. fiction writers were writing about it. Like, like a long time. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Matrix was a real. Thing. Lawnmower Man. Yeah. Watch uh, it. You'll like it. It's, I mean... it's an old movie. I don't know. I've never seen it either. Um, I'm embarrassed I... to say my first VR experience was a little NASCAR uh, game. There was a little headset you'd throw on. That sounds that sounds great. Yeah, in, uh, in arcades, wow. they had like Battle Zone and stuff. Had like head mounted oh, yeah. displays that would hang, that would move with your head. They were around all the Battle way from Zone? the mid '80s. I think it was Battle Zone, wasn't it? From like I, the mid '80s. I didn't really call that VR though. I it's never like a really called that VR. Game. Yeah it, yeah, it was like a vector graphics thing. Three, yeah. Three, it was like a submarine game, like Periscope thing you look at. Yeah, it might have been Periscope. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was that? Uh, Erebus? Oh, I forgot the game called. It's like, the playing any... <sighs> uh, never mind. <laughs> they really oh, old game play. Hmm? You're very quiet. Oh, am I? 
Uh, never mind. I forgot the game called. But I used to play those uh, like, I don't know, like, like eight or something, it's like giant robots and stuff. Yeah, so inter interesting. So there's like all these different things, exp little experiences that we might have had that are kind of little exposures to yeah, VR. Yeah, I think it's it's been like peppered throughout, kind of throughout the yeah. years um, before it kind of hit this huge explosion. I don't know, I, I took a Lyft ride today and I started talking to my Lyft driver about VR and he didn't, like he didn't even know it was even released yet. He'd never heard of the Oculus Rift or, or anything. And so like he, <laughs> yeah. he was just like, oh, it's I thought it was just a science fiction or whatever. Um, so I, you know, it's still not universal, uh, so people are still having their first, uh, exposure to VR. Um, so, I don't know, so we'll see how, where it goes from here. I, I think that, uh, I don't know, there's still questions about where, like, how fast VR is moving and, like, how mainstream it's going to get, but I think it has a pretty solid place in in uh just in the computing world uh because it was envisioned i mean it was envisioned so early uh and has always been part of people's uh, at least some people's thinking about computers and about interaction and um and the way we interact with the world and the and the stories that we get to tell ourselves and in this case it's a like a story that we're telling directly to our senses about where we are who we're seeing uh, yeah what we're the space we're in and also and also i think it's something like some people some people who don't use vr like oh it's gonna go away and blah blah or it's dying it's like i don't think anyone in this room this virtual room uh is gonna give up <laughs> vr at any time like i'm like i'm never nope. going yeah, back to yeah it's like it's i don't think so this is basically it, my life now yeah it's like it changed so, my life okay, great. It's changed my life changed my life yeah lives. it's crazy You always want to be healthy about it, for sure. Like that's that's something. Yeah. To, to I should probably do that. Whatever, uh -huh. whatever that means for you. People know about VR, but never really experience it. Like it, they never have the money to experience it. Like me, like I have heard of VR for years, but I never like really, well, really I, try it. Try. It. I hope you, I hope you can you can try it soon. Uh, I know it's yeah. There's a there's definitely a price barrier right now. Um, so I, I definitely saved up to get my first Oculus Rift. It was, uh, it was, it took, it, it took a while, but you know, I, I got there eventually. Yeah, but prices are going to be coming down. Secondhand equipment's going to be available. It's going to be more oh, yeah. accessible. It'll yeah, just get better and yeah. better. It'll be like the PC market. Like PCs were really expensive when they first came out too, and now everybody has one. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be interested. I don't think I'm going to Oculus Connect, and I don't think they're going to announce any new hardware, but. Um, uh, if they do, it'll be interesting to see if the price of the Quest comes down. But probably not because it just came out. So, um, yeah, but hopefully the prices will keep going down over time. Yeah, that definitely will. What was that? Did you oh, yes, wait, what did he. What, I don't remember what he said though. I thought that that was Santa. And what 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 did he say that was? Well, Maybe that was the new thing for present day. Oh. Ah, you know, like hmm. the different VR headset code names, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty coming down the pipeline. We'll we'll start seeing more and more new devices. It'll be cool. I remember that. I forgot about that. Yeah, random dude. <laughs> yes. Oh man, patents from the 60s too. There were patents for eye tracking, face tracking, um, like any, basically tons of different things. Like this stuff has been imagined for forever and ever, and so it's cool to finally see it. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, before we wrap things up tonight, um, I wanted to make an announcement. Uh, okay, so I I wanted to tell you guys that I'm. Going to be stepping down as an Endgame co-host. Um, the, uh, the last two and a half years have been really awesome. This community has been uh, amazing, and it's been amazing to 
cherish this experience with all of you and to have all these conversations and uh, it's been really powerful for me and I really appreciate it. Um, I'm, I'm at kind of a point in my life right now where I, I have to move on and uh, focus on some other things, um, but I will still be around. I plan on being involved in the community and the discord and everything and I still want to be here. Um, but I, I will not be taking a regular place on the stage. Um, so I wanted so to you're tell just you guys that like an audience member. Yeah, I'm gonna right. be I'm gonna be an audience member. So that'll be that'll be a whole mm -hmm. new adventure for me, and that'll be good. Um, yeah. So thanks you guys for everything and for being such an awesome community. Yeah. You're amazing, Popo. Everything you've done Thank you. there. Popo. We love you. Yeah. Seriously, Super. it's You're amazing awesome. and. I'm sad to see you stepping down, but also excited to see what, you know, what you're focusing on next and things. And you like have made this show, you know, you're, you're an integral part of this show. You're uh, breathtaking. And everything. <laughs> you're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how, like what the future, how we're gonna like structure things in the future, uh, open to ideas and things like that. It might happen it might be a little bit less often potentially um the shows and things like that we might try doing it at a different time as well like i know there's a lot of people in europe who talked about like sat like doing it on a saturday maybe and and you know maybe scheduling events in advance i don't know we're just kind of exploring like what the potentials are um having more guests and things like that so um yeah we'll figure out a way to kind of keep going forward i think you know you've helped popo po to create this space that where we're able to have like serious conversations about cool things and and like the VR chat community like you guys have so much cool knowledge and stuff like that and goes to or Endgame VR and I were talking uh, I don't know who goes there is uh, about you know <laughs> trying to pull that knowledge and stuff because it's like I'm always blown away by the amount of technical knowledge that everybody has and stuff like that so just trying to figure out like a way to kind of keep this um, these kind of serious discussions going and like you know interesting ideas and things like that so um yeah we'll we'll figure it out and um yeah but it's you know you you you'll always be a part of endgame you know that's it's 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 in your blood <laughs> and it's in endgame's blood too so um okay you've been a great host and you always have good things to say right. cool maybe someone will replace popular or cycle be this just so close uh... so close I think that would be, yeah, we yeah. have to discuss that a little bit, see what we were going to do. Yeah, but I'm always, I mean, look, I think having having someone else on stage is always preferred. Like, you know, it, it's, I mean, only rarely, uh, one time I did give like a talk or something, but like, yeah, having other people on stage or being in a circle, not having a stage necessarily, or all being in a circle, like, you know, I don't want to be the only one, you know, leading in the discussion necessarily. So, um, yeah, we'll figure it out. But that's also with the Discord. And for those who aren't in the Discord, if you go to endgamevr.com, you can uh, join our Discord if you want. But, uh, but yeah, we can figure out, like, all different types of solutions. And um, and not to and mention I'll... Ghoster, who's okay. been a huge part, you know, here every yeah. show and, and recording and putting huge amounts of work in, to too. Ah, uh, don't worry yeah. about it. I've already got the computer, so why not, you know? <laughs> Don't um, worry yeah, so, about it. <laughs> uh, so thanks, you guys, and I'll be, you know, I'll be cheering you on from the sidelines. So that's yeah. really fun to watch. Yes, um, yes, yes. So and because I know no one has prepared material, it is now open roast night on Popopo. Please line up oh, in the center. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, if, anyone, if anybody wants to make their grievances known, like now is the time. Actually, no. Wait till after the show. Please, please be nice. Please known. be nice. <laughs> you need longer wings. Um, the, okay. Oh, I don't take that feedback. Um, no. Okay. okay. Uh, we, picture time. Yeah. Should we do? Uh, yeah. Yes, let's do a let's picture. Take um, final picture. I'll take a. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. I'm. I'll be. I'll be around, but I'm still. You know. Still yes. Around. Thanks for everything you've done, Popo. You've always been pretty good on the show. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, lot, a lot of great discussions. I don't want to spam. I agree. It's been good. Been <laughs> All right. We need a phrase. Oh. Okay. Oh wait, I gotta get my 
effects up so I can get the uh, alpha. All right, we're gonna say po 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 on three, two, one. Po -po 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 <laughs> With the random box. Alrighty. Like someone calling my name. <laughs> <laughs> Your community. Yeah. Yes. I love you guys. Yay. We love you too. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Put that away. <laughs> wow. They we're not even done with the show yet. The show's not even <laughs> ended. Come on. <laughs> My bad. I mean, I guess technically it's done right. now. Yeah, I just gotta do yeah. the pullback and uh, st stop the recording. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for everything you have I'm done. I'm doing good. How about you? I appreciate yeah, it. Good, thanks. Well, thank you. I, I, yeah, you know, uh, I think you've been around for for a, a little while now. Hey, so your hair is very months. distracting. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna...